Hello everyone, welcome to Enviro Pioneers. In this video, we will learn about the map projections. Understanding the basic concept of map projection is important for all those who are involved in the map making or working with the spatial data in the GIS software. Let us start with a very basic example. Suppose if we want to project the features of this orange on a paper. So in order to do so, if we squash this orange on a flat surface, the skin of it will get split and spread in all the directions. So the original property like the shape of it is getting changed when we are trying to project the uh, orange on a paper. Similarly, when we try to project the features on the earth surface from the three dimensional spheroid earth onto two dimensional paper, there is possibility that some change in the properties may occur. For example, the area and the shape may change or the distance and the direction between the individual features can no longer be maintained. So in order to do so, we use map projections. So the map projections are the transformation of geographic coordinate into the Cartesian coordinate space of the map. So as we saw in the last video that this latitude and the longitudes are the angular position on the earth surface which is measured from the center of the earth. So the map projection is the manner in which the three dimensional spherical surface of the earth is represented on a two dimensional surface of a piece of paper and this term projection it comes from the idea of placing a light source within a transparent globe and projecting the shadows of the meridians and the parallels onto a sheet of paper which is placed tangent to the globe so the map projections are these transformation of the spherical surface onto a plane surface and it is actually carried out by representing the parallel of latitude and the meridian of longitude of the earth or part of it on a plane surface at a conveniently chosen scale and if we go for the proper definition of this map projection it is actually the mathematical transformation of the locations in the three dimensional space of the earth surface onto two dimensional space of a map sheet and the total idea of the map projection is to preserve the properties of the real world features when they are depicted on a map so which properties are to be maintained that is area shape distance and the directions and actually all are applicable but during the projection only some of them can be preserved. Now coming to the classification of map projection. So on the basis of the drawing technique or the construction, these map projections may be classified into the perspective projection and the non-perspective projections. So the perspective projections are those in which it has been imagined that a series of rays are emerging from a source of light and these are passing through a transparent globe to cast the shadow of the parallels and the meridians on the projection surface. And the non-perspective projections are the modified perspective projection for achieving certain desired properties such as true area, shape, direction and bearing. So here we are not considering the source of light but we are actually having the intersecting lines which are drawn on the projection surface without any reference to the source of light and these are drawn or these are achieved by the mathematical operation. So these type of projections which are uh, done mainly using the mathematical calculation these are referred as the non-perspective projections. Second classification is on the basis of developable surface onto which these network of the meridians and the parallels are projected and this developable surface is a surface which can be laid out flat without distortion and three type of developable surface are there cylindrical then conical and then planar. So let us see how these developable surfaces are placed around the globe. Here we have the globe of our earth and the first consideration is uh, where we fold a paper in the form of a cylinder and 
we place it around the globe in such a manner that the axis of the cylinder is parallel to the polar axis of the earth and this type of projection is referred as the cylindrical projection second consideration is that if we take a paper and fold it like a cone and place it over the earth or over the globe in such a manner that the axis of the cone is aligning with the polar axis of the earth so this type of projection is referred as the conical projection third consideration is where we lay down a piece of paper either over the north pole or over the south pole and this type of projection is referred as the planar or the azimuthal projection so these are the technique of wrapping the developable surface around the globe or considering it wrapped around the earth surface so now coming to the projection part so here for projection part we are considering the source of light placed inside the translucent globe and whatever will be on the globe it will be projected on the developable surface either it is in the form of the cylindrical projection or the conical projection or the planar projection so suppose if we cut open this particular cylinder and spread it down so all the vertical lines these will be representing the meridians and all the horizontal lines these will be representing the parallels in the case of the conical projection and if we cut this and spread it down so all the meridians will be represented by the lines spreading from this particular arc and all the parallels will be represented in the form of the curved lines similarly in the case of the planar projection here the center part will be the pole either north or the south pole depending at which side this particular developable surface is kept and from this pole or from this point all the lines which are getting spread out these will be representing the meridians and the parallels will be represented in the form of the circles so here we have the representation of the cylindrical projection conical projection and the planar or the azimuthal projection we can see here all the vertical lines these are representing the meridians and all the horizontal lines these are representing the parallels similarly in the conical projection all the straight line which are spreading out from this particular arc these are representing the meridians and the parallels are represented as the curved lines and in the planar and the azimuthal projection the center point is the pole and all the meridians are getting spread out from this particular center point and we are having the parallels in the form of a circle so when we are considering the developable surface around the globe there is a technical term for the line of latitude and the line of longitude where this imaginary piece of paper is touching the earth so the line of latitude at which this imaginary uh, paper is touching that is referred as the standard parallel and the line of longitude where it is touching that is referred as the central meridian so here we have the standard parallel and this vertical line is the central meridian so we have the importance of the standard parallel and the central meridian because the point where this particular uh, developable surface is touching around the earth this is the place where we'll be having the maximum accuracy during the map projection but as we move away from the standard parallel or from the central meridian there will be distortion in the map projection in these three projection system which we discussed the developable surface is assumed to touch the surface of the globe and these are referred as the tangent cylinder tangent cone and the tangent plane as most of the map projections are generated using the mathematical calculation so mathematically it is possible to make the developable surface cut through the globe and these are referred as the secant cylinder secant cone and the secant plane and the word secant it means a line that intersect a curve at a minimum of two distinct point and using the secant surface it will minimize the amount of distortion that occurs as we move away from the standard parallel or from the pole and in case of the secant cylinder and the secant cone two standard parallels will be produced 
where the scales will be more accurate than in any other part of the earth or the globe. So here we have the tangent cylinder and the secant cylinder. In the case of the tangent cylinder, the surface it touch uh, over the globe only on the equator and this is only one standard parallel. But in case of the secant cylinder where we are actually intersecting the curve at two distinct points. In this case we are having the two standard parallels. So we will be having the maximum accuracy at these two latitude lines. Similarly here we have the tangent cone and the secant cone. So the tangent cone uh, this is the latitude where this cone is touching the globe. So this is the standard parallel. So in case of the tangent cone, we'll be having only one standard parallel. But when we are having the secant cone where the line is intersecting the globe. So in this case, we'll be having the two standard parallels. And here at these two latitudes, we'll be having the maximum accuracy. Here we have the comparison of the tangent and secant in all these three uh, projection. So cylindrical projection it is mainly done for uh, the latitude zero. It means for the equator. Conic projection is mainly done for the latitude which is more than uh, zero and less than 90. It means it is above the equator but uh, below the polar area. And the azimuthal projection, the latitude is 90 degree. It means it is placed either at the North Pole or the South Pole. So here in the case of the tangent, we are having only one standard parallel where we'll be having the uh, maximum accuracy. And in case of the azimuthal or the planar projection, the maximum accuracy is in the center where it is actually touching the globe. Here we have the secant cylinder, secant cone and the secant plane where we have the two standard parallels in the case of the cylinder and the cone. In case of secant plane, it is actually cutting the globe across a particular latitude. So in these two cases, here we are having the maximum accuracy. In the center part, we are having the scale compression. And in the outermost part, we are having the less scale expansion in comparison to the tangent one. Similarly, in the case of the secant cone also, in the tangent uh, planar projection earlier, it was only the center part where we were having the maximum accuracy. But in case of the secant planar projection, the accuracy will be along a particular latitude or along a particular parallel. Now coming to the aspects of the map projection which depends upon the position of the dilapidable surface with respect to the globe. Till now what we discussed that is the normal aspect of the map projection where the axis of the cylindrical or the conical projection that is parallel or the coincident to the polar axis and the plane is tangent to the pole either south pole or the north pole. Then we have the transverse aspect. So transverse aspect is when the axis of the cylinder or the cone, it is placed 90 degree to the polar axis and the plane, it is placed tangent at the equator of the earth. So here we can see that this is the position of the cylinder and the cone is 90 degree of the normal case and here earlier the uh, plane was at the pole but now we are having the position of the plane at the equator. So this is the transverse aspect. Third is the oblique aspect where the axis of the cylinder or the cone or the center of the plane it is located somewhere between the equator and the pole of the earth and these this particular aspect it is used for mapping the area that lie at an angle to the latitude or the longitude. The position of the dilapidable surface with respect to globe, it affects the appearance of the graticule on the map and it helps us in creating the projection that would better preserve the properties for a particular area. The transverse and the oblique aspects are the transformation of the normal aspect of the map projection so that the certain desired properties may be preserved for a particular area to be mapped. So here we can see the difference between the transverse and the oblique mercator. In the transverse mercator we are having one meridian as the uh, central meridian 
and in this case uh, the position of the cylinder is oblique and we can see the difference here so depending upon which particular property we want to preserve either it can be shape it can be area distance or direction for a particular area to be mapped we can select either transverse or the oblique aspect of the uh, map projection so one example is the transverse mercator projection where the cylinder is rotated in such a manner that the center of the cylinder is coinciding with the desired central meridian because at this particular meridian the projection will be true to the scale means the projection will be uh, more accurate next important thing is viewpoint of map projection which depends upon the position of the source of light so the map projection it may be produced from three viewpoint uh, which is also referred as the projection points so till now what we discussed there we imagine the source of light placed inside the translucent globe so the uh, there may be variation here we are having the source of light placed at the center here the rays are coming from the infinity and third is the source of light is placed on the surface of the globe opposite to the dilapable surface so here we have the dilapable surface and here we have the source of light so depending upon what is the position of the source of light we have three different type of projections so when the source of light is placed in the center it is referred as the mnemonic projection when the source of light is at infinity then it is orthographic projection and when the source of light is placed at the opposite side of the dilapable surface this is referred as the stereographic projection in case of the mnemonic projection all the great circles these are in the form of a straight line and these are mainly used for the navigation charts then uh, orthographic projection when this projection is applied to the planar equatorial case here the appearance of earth is similar to what we see from the space and when it is applied to the cylindrical normal case all the long longitudes they remain parallel at equal distance apart but uh, the latitudes they remain parallel but with decreasing distance towards the pole so here we can see the distance between two latitude is more but as we move towards the pole the distance it decreases and in case of the stereographic projection when it is applied to the planar equatorial case both the latitude and the longitude they appear to be curved line and when it is applied to the cylindrical normal all the longitude remains parallel and at equal distance apart but the latitude they remain parallel and with decreasing distance apart towards the equator so the, there is opposite case here the distance it decreases between two latitudes towards the pole but in case of the stereographic projection the distance between two latitude decreases as we move towards the equator so here we can see in this image that uh, the distance between two uh, latitude it is more when it is near to the pole but as we move towards the equator the distance between two latitude lines it decreases these are some of the references from where the content of this video has been taken the first one is the book the concept and the technique of the geographic information system and major content has been taken from this book only and some help have been taken from these websites uh, where uh, the images are available and some of the concept is available so uh, i will also mention these references in the description box still few more topics are remaining within the map projections like the projection type based on the characteristics of the resultant projected maps then important map projections which are used in the gis with emphasis on the universal transverse mercator's projection that is also uh, known as the utm projection and thank you for your continuous support we will meet soon in the next video covering these topics thank you